This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. <laughs> Talk about dumping him on his butt. A fisherman. Wow! Shark fishing with a topwater. A conservationist. Don't be bashful. Come on out. A family man. Woo, baby. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Okay, let's go. Today is a special day, <laughs> number one, because it's raining. It hadn't rained on me in a long time. Hi there. I am at Moret Deer Farms out of Elkhart, Indiana, and this is Nate. Nate is the owner here, and these are your kids, I'm assuming? Yes, sir. And what are their names? This is Madison. Hey, Madison. Kendall. Hey, Kendall. <laughs> and Hunter. Hey, Hunter. All right, I'm Mr. Keith. And uh, what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna be going to uh, Nate's farm here and showing you uh, what he has. And we're gonna be going to Pine Creek Deer Farms out here in Indiana. And Indiana is, is a different place compared to uh, Texas and Louisiana. The, the rules here are different. In Indiana, you cannot have hunting preserves. That's real important to point out. There no hunting preserves up here in Indiana. So, so deer that are actually raised on deer farms here, many of them gets transferred out of state. So if you're an out of state deer farmer, and are out-of-state landowner, then you're interested in, in having some great genetics from the north. You can deliver them, can't you? Absolutely, we yeah. deliver all over the country. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go out the pens, we're gonna watch these youngins do their chores, yeah. and we're gonna show you some great big old deer. All right, who gets to sit on my lap? Oh, yeah. All right, Hunter, get over here, buddy. Get over here. All right, let's go see the deer. What I like so much about coming to a deer farm is, is seeing the kids. I mean, the kids are, uh, this that's the future right there. And seeing the kids, the way that they, they work and they help. This, look at them, climbing on the feeders. I mean, this is, it teaches them responsibility and respect and uh, it's just good values. This is, uh, these are little treats. A lot of guys are feeding these treats. They're not very good tasting for us, but the deer really love them. But every day they come in and they check the deer like this. They treat the deer and they look at them and you tell me, it's like deer were made for kids. This is one of the main reasons why I love deer farming, uh, me personally, is just the interaction that the kids have with the deer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the bottle fed fawns, they help me bottle feed, they help me tag them. They come out here most every day. I say most every day. There are certain days that they don't come out. Uh, help me do chores. I mean. Just getting them, I mean, they're not inside playing Nintendo, they're outside learning what wildlife is all about. That's the most important thing to deer farming, when it, I mean, in my opinion. Uh, you know, teaching good values, I mean, good family values, good values for our country. Uh, deal is, you, you'll be looking at these does and these fawns, now they, you, you sell deer. Absolutely. I mean, you, you're a deer farmer, you sell deer, and the, the deer that you sell, you, uh, I mean, do you DNA everything? Absolutely, when anything is sold out of here, it will be DNA'd and guaranteed. I'm gonna guarantee them healthy. If they're bred, I'm gonna guarantee a healthy fawn. I mean, you're gonna be happy no matter what happens. I'll lose a deer, whatever. You're gonna be happy, I'll come out the short end of the stick just to make you happy. Okay, good, you know, that's the way most of the deer farmers I know are. They're gonna do, they're gonna do more than they can to make you happy. But if somebody wanted to get started in deer farming, uh, and they're not deer farmers right now, give them, the one piece of advice that you would think that would be most important for them to know? Quality is better than quantity. I would rather much, much rather have a better bread dough uh, than 10 doughs. And the way that you get quality, you, you get what you pay for. Absolutely. But, but it, you know, there's nothing wrong also with just being a hobbyist either. I mean, a, a hobbyist deer farmer, deer farming is fun, whether you make any money at it or not. It's fun. I mean, uh, and so if you're a hobbyist, you can get into deer for very, very affordable prices right. nowadays. Right. Okay, so if they're interested in uh, in hooking up with you, give them a telephone number so they can call, and we'll be giving it to you in a little bit too, but give it to them now. 574-340-1165. If you wind up spending time with your deer, it's kind of like spending time with kids. 
You spell love, T-I-M-E? <laughs> you do. And that's what you do with, ki with kids, put your deer in the deer pens, spend time with the kids in the deer pens, spend time with the deer in the deer pens, and everybody's gonna be better for it. Where are the bucks? Right there. Well, can you show them to me? We're gonna go see the bucks? <laughs> If you like the way our show looks on your television set, you're going to absolutely love it when you see it in full HD online. And you can watch it on my website 24-7 free of charge at KeithWarren.net. Take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. Well guys, it's time for you guys to get with mom and go to school. Mr. Keith and I are going to go see the bucks. <laughs> One of these days you'll be able to stay out of school like me. <laughs> Come on, load up. Come on. Come on. I got one. One more. Two more. Okay, let's go. Get out of the All right. So, ooh. That's what I'm talking about. That right there is one heck of a deer. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. All right, so how old are most of these bucks? Most of them are yearlings. Uh, I do have two breeders in here, one three-year-old and one four-year-old, uh, but uh, most of them are yearlings. Really? So this guy right here, that's a yearling? The one on the left here, yes. He's a yearling out of uh, Gladiator. He's actually, uh, don't want to, but he is bottle-fed. His mom died the day after giving birth. Uh, she had triplets and uh, all three bucks. One buck fawn died, but I was able to save the other two on the bottle. As a deer farmer, we don't, typically deer farmers do not raise bucks, bottle raised bucks. Okay, and the reason why is because we don't, we don't want them gentle. We, we just don't want them gentle. A buck, even if, if he's raised on the bottle, he can be very, very dangerous come the rut. Uh, so we don't want them gentle at all. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I mean, Nate's trying to grow the biggest deer he can, and part of that, <laughs> Kind of silly, but obviously part of it's just keeping them alive. I mean, you know, you got great genetics, and you don't keep them alive. That's kind of silly. So, but uh, so that the mama had triplets, so correct, correct. And she didn't clean after fawning, and she died uh, the day or two afterwards. Uh, one of the fawns died, and I was able to, to save the other two. All right, so tell me about this guy right here. What's the deal with him? That's a three-year-old out of Max Bow. His name's Yankee. Bottom side's very strong, also. Uh, Reno and BJ. That's where I think he gets his width, but he, he Max Bow's probably one of the best buck throwers that there ever was. Uh, he's a mainframe eight by seven. Last year he was 26 inches inside. This year I would say he's at least that. The deer that, that Nate has, you have them all DNA pedigreed, so if somebody wants to see the profile on them, they can contact you. And, and what, what you're doing with DNA pedigrees, you're actually, uh, you're, you're, you're stacking the odds in your favor by stacking the genetics. I mean, that's the best I can put it. The best thing that I can say is, is just study, study, study on genetics, what works, what doesn't work. Here, 90% of the does are either Patrick or Felice bred, and, and they're producing these, these bucks here. You got some unbelievable deer. Now, uh, you sell these bucks starting at one. I mean, you'll sell one-year-olds, won't you? Correct, correct. Okay, so if you're at home, you want to, to you know, get some great genetics. I mean, this is a pretty good deal, but let, let me ask you this. Uh, how far away can you deliver these deer? We've delivered all over the country. Missouri, Kansas, uh, Louisiana, um, Pennsylvania, w Wisconsin. Uh, we'll go all over the country. Wow, and so uh, I know there are some states that have closed borders. Texas is one of them. Alabama's another one that you can't bring deer in. But if you're in a state that you can bring deer in, I can't think of a neater thing to do to start supercharging your herd is you have a piece of property, erect a high fence on it, Call Nate, he'll load them up, bring them down, boom, instant giant deer herd. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish we could do that in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you do AI work and all too? Uh, we have a vet come in that does AI, correct. correct. Okay, so I, I noticed your fawns are a little bit further along than my fawns. When is your AI date? November, first week of November. Uh, actually, right around the first week of November, yes. Okay, and, and the reason why you AI is why? outside genetics. Just like what you said, Texas borders are closed. There's some bucks in here and some does in here that are out of Texas deer. All right, so tell me what's the deal with this guy right here. 
That's a four-year-old out of uh, Maxbow Ranger. Uh, Maxbow Ranger genetics are very, very rare. Uh, we bought that buck directly from Levi Weaver, who owns Maxbow Ranger. Uh, the reason why we bought him is because of uh, what Maxbow Ranger has done, and uh, his frame is what we're trying to pass on, trying to keep a deer to look like a deer what it should. Boy, he's beautiful. He's got great beams, tine length, just enough trash to really be pretty and outstanding. He's beautiful. He's got all the characteristics we're looking for. Just like what you said, the beams, the tine length is what I really like. I wish he was a little wider, but hey, if I could dream up every deer, then, then it wouldn't be as, uh, as hard as what it is. Okay, so if somebody wanted to buy some semen from you on that deer, would you have some semen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got semen on him, and we're actually going to sex semen this year on him also. So uh, if you just want bucks out of him, we can get you that also. Okay, what about Yankee? You got any semen on him? Yes, we do not have sex semen on him, uh, but we do have semen on him available. Look at Yankee. Oh, man, what a beautiful deer. As a three-year-old, too. Wow. And Yankee, you know, typically, I can say this, John. I don't like Yankees. Well, I like that Yankee. <laughs> That's a heck of a Yankee right there. I'm Nate Moret from Moret Whitetails, and you're watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, DNA Solutions, and the North American Deer Registry, Four Canyons Ranch, Hoff Power Polaris, the Hunter Heritage Foundation, and record rack deer feeds. All right, so let me ask you a question. Why did you get into deer farming? Well, the, the first thing was is I wanted my family to be involved in something. My wife came from somewhat of a city folks and wasn't much into livestock and deer. I, I knew would be a great avenue to pursue. Uh, my kids love it, my wife loves it, and mostly now that we've been into it, it's the, the friends and family that we've come accustomed to that, I mean, we're all one big family up here in the northern Indiana part. I mean, we all help out doing the AI, working the deer, and it would take a lot to get me out of deer now. You know, even if there was no money in it, most of the deer farmers I know would still do it because it, the, the love of the deer, love of the business, love of the people. And, and, and if you don't have a deer farm and you'd like to have a deer farm, we do have a winter deer farm sweepstakes we're doing. And all you need to do is go online, it's absolutely free. And we were, we're gonna set somebody up with a deer farm. I don't know where it's gonna be. It may be in Indiana, it may be in Texas, maybe in Florida, but somebody, wherever deer farm is legal, if you're the winner, we're gonna set you up with a deer farm. I'm thinking what, I wish somebody had done that with me years <laughs> yeah, ago. Yeah. That's a pretty cool deal. Yep. Okay, we're done here. I don't know, Pine Creek's got a lot of big deer. Hopefully this weather will hold and hopefully we can go see some. Let's go. It's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by winadeerfarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. Dear Keith, my question is about artificial inseminating of whitetails. What's the percentage of conception and is there a standard? Thanks for the great show and being a voice for all sportsmen. Sincerely, Max Hamilton from Florida. Uh, Max, as far as the uh, percentage of success rate with artificial insemination, it all depends on so many different things. First off, it depends on how you do it, whether you do it uh, vaginally or whether you do it laparoscopically. Typically, laparoscopically, the success rate is going to be higher than vaginally. As far as the percentage of success goes, uh, if you're going to do it uh, vaginally, 50% uh, is pretty much uh, what everybody accepts as being okay. Uh, the guys that I deal with get a lot better success out of it than that. Uh, last year, I wound up, I got on a vaginal AI process, I got 90%, which is extremely good. But a lot of it depends upon your vet tech that you use. I use Whitetail Genetics. But it also depends upon the stress of the animals, how you handle them. So there's a lot of different variables, Max, but I uh, hope that answers some of your questions. Max, that's a great question, and thanks for sending it in. So you think you're pretty good at scoring deer. Tell me what this deer scores right here. This is a young buck from Indiana. Uh, you know, we talk about on our program artificial insemination. Uh, this buck right here actually is a sire uh, of a deer that I've got on my place, a real young buck I've got on my place. We'll show you uh, a shot of him right now, and then we'll come back to this guy. I want you to see that uh, artificial insemination works. The deer pass on uh, a lot of good genetics. But uh, let me know what you think this deer scores. Get on my Facebook page, the person who gets closest. We're going to send them a really nice prize. Not bad for a two-year-old, is it? All right, so how old are these bucks? All these bucks in here are three years old. My goodness, I mean, look at them. 
Now this results a live cover as well as AI? It's probably uh, more towards the live cover than the AI, but there are some AI bucks in here. This herd here has been 25 years of trial and error, mostly going back to the Patrick bloodline and finding out what really works with the Patrick bloodline. 20 to 25 years of work is right there in front of us. I tell everybody, it seems like we live in a microwave world. People want things fast, right now. I want it right now. And it took 20 to 25 years of right now to get this right here. Right. And so, but if you really and truly want it right now, you can you can have it. You just need to give Nate a holler and uh, you'll have some big deer. 20, 25 years are right now, right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if somebody would like more information, uh, how do they get a hold of you? 574-340-1165. Or give them a website? PineCreekDeerFarms.com. Well, y'all wind up selling semen from your deer, and one of the deer that you do have an interest in that you wind up have semen available, tell me about him. Uh, he's a five-year-old. His name's X-Factor. Uh, he's a pretty big deer. Uh, he's known pretty much uh, all the way across the country. Uh, we're pretty proud to have, have an interest in him. So if somebody's interested in the semen on that, just give you a holler? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Good. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by WinADeerFarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. All right, so who are these guys? Uh, these are two-year-olds and two four-year-olds. One of the four-year-olds is a breeder. Okay, you think their antlers are just about done now? Yeah, they're getting pretty close, maybe a week or two left, but they're mostly finished out now. All right, let me ask you this. As far as determining the age that you're gonna put a buck in the breeding pool, do you use yearlings, and if so, why? We have two things genetically and what their antlers look like score-wise. We have, we don't like to, um, but we do. Okay, all right. So these deer right here, I know that you wanna keep as, as a deer breeder. <laughs> I look at them, uh, I, I just, I, I'm amazed by them. I think as a, as a deer, breeder, deer farmer. We want to make sure that, that we get the most out of the deer that we can. And so most of us keep them until they're three years old. Correct. But uh, would y'all sell them prior to that? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we've moved, uh, like I said, we really don't like to move buck fawns, but we have moved as early as yearlings. Okay. All right, so you know we're, we're showing you a lot of different bucks here and you, you're seeing tons of bucks and they're very, very impressive. But uh, it's important to point out that that y'all have got just as impressive of a doe herd. And it's really what's on the inside, it's the blood that counts. It's not It's not what's up on the head. I mean, the does, the quality of does, many deer farmers nowadays believe that if you're gonna build a good herd, it starts with your does. Correct, and correct. It, I mean, years ago, it, we didn't think that. I mean, it, everybody thought it was a box, but it's the does. So if somebody would like to, to just purchase does, they can do that from you, right? Yes. And, yes. and we're not gonna show you does because does really all look alike. and and but these are exceptional does so if you're interested uh, in does just to, to populate your herd then you can go ahead and call Nate but the the deal is too you could actually start off with say one breeder buck and like a half a dozen does right uh, well you, you're starting out with somebody else having to do the time blood sweat and tears so to speak and to build the quality of the herd up but uh, this is pretty amazing. I mean, just looking at these animals and realizing that what you're looking at right here is the result of 20 to 25 years of experience breeding whitetails the way they need, they need to be bred, so. All right, well, show me some yearlings. Sounds good. Now, these are the yearlings, right? Correct. All of these are yearlings except there's one four-year-old breeder in here. Yeah, you can tell who the breeder is. I mean, he's head and shoulders over everybody else, but I mean, there's some outstanding yearlings. Yeah, this is by far the best group of yearlings we've ever had, and there's one in there that's by far the biggest yearling we've ever had. Do you find that uh, your yearlings get better and better every year? Yes, we do. The trial and error is where that, that comes in. I mean, after 25 years of doing it, um, you, you learn what, what's working and what's not working, and hopefully the fawns are better than the does and the, the bucks that make them. Well, the, the deal is when you start using DNA and you're using the North American Deer Registry, it becomes a whole lot easier to, for predictability purposes to stack. So you take good, better, and you get best, and it just, it, that's just proof of it right there. 
All right, we're out of time for today's show, and the weather's sucking in. It's getting kind of nasty, but I appreciate you showing me the deer. And uh, if y'all want more information on how to get a hold of Nate up here in Indiana, we'll have a telephone number coming up in a few seconds. Make sure to write it down and give him a call. You can shoot him an email too. And uh, if you want more information personally, you can get a hold of me. And uh, I'll help you out any way I can. I'd like to thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Let's get out of this rain, man. Come on. For more information on Moret Whitetails and Pine Creek Deer Farms, call 574-340-1165 or visit pinecreekdeerfarms.com. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer in the country, Hoff Power Polaris. If you'd like to watch full episodes of our programs 24 seven online in full HD, log on to my website at keithwarren.net. There you'll find the shows, but you'll also find a lot of outtakes and behind the scenes videos as well. That's keithwarren.net. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories are provided by Whitetail Genetics.